Okay, let's talk about the clausius inequality, which again is just another way of describing those uh, second law statements. Now, the difference between this and some of the other things we talked about is this really works regardless of how energy is uh, received or rejected uh, through reservoirs. So before we had one, you know, one hot, one cold. This one I could have several in, several out, that sort of thing. Okay. And this integral that I have here is essentially for a cycle. Now, this only pertains to cycle, just like the Kelvin Planck statement only goes to cycle. Okay. Where basically what this boils down to is the sum of all of the heat transfers at their temperatures. Okay. So, yes, it's an integral, but we'll really, you know, an integral is just a uh, infinitesimal sum. Okay, so we sum up all of the heat transfer at the temperatures that they are at. Okay, and that has to equal a negative sigma. Okay, now sigma, we will move into this is kind of the start of discussion of entropy in the next chapter. Okay, this sigma, if it equals zero, that is the ideal system. There are, it's completely reversible, there are no irreversibilities. Okay, so if you sum up all the heat transfers divided by their temperatures at what they occur at, we get uh, no irreversibilities. Okay, if it's greater than zero, and again, notice the negative sign in the equation, right? So, but when if sigma is greater than zero, that is kind of a real system. That's when we have irreversibilities. Okay, um, and if it's less than zero, that is what's impossible, which is to say. Again, if you think about the heat transfers, what that's saying is all the heat transfer is coming into the system. Nothing is is going out, right? Because then your uh, your Q in then becomes, um, you know, it, it's greater than zero, right? Where then the negative makes it less than zero, right? So that's what's impossible. Again, that Kelvin Planck statement where it's basically saying, hey, you can't have all the heat transfer coming in. You have to have some going out. And that's where this kind of derives from, okay? Now, the sigma is actually a measure of the irreversibilities. And this is really what we're going to get started with when we start talking about entropy in the next chapter, okay? So this is kind of the, the foundation for our development of entropy, okay? And the sigma is really the measure of what we call the entropy production, which we'll talk about later, but it's a measure of how irreversible it actually is. So if this, sig this sigma has to be greater than zero. It cannot be less than zero. If it is zero, it, which it will never be in real life, that is a reversible system. Okay, so the sigma is always greater than zero in, in, in real life.